Hey everybody, Chris Farad here. Welcome to Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. This is the full release of the game. Uh, I got a chance to play the beta a few weeks back, and I really enjoyed it. Not only were the characters really well done, uh, the combat is fun, very XCOM-like, uh, but the story that's behind this is actually what's intrigued me the most. Uh, if you don't know what that is, basically, we're controlling a team of mutants, and we're kind of navigating this post-human Earth. But there's a lot of mystery surrounding why this is the case. Um, we have this one guy back at base that is kind of leading us all, and there's a lot of mystery around him, and so I'm really intrigued to see where this goes. Uh, I had a really good time with the beta, so uh, here we are for the full release. Um, if you guys are interested in buying the game for yourself, I'll have a link down below. It is a referral link, so it does help me out a little bit, but if you're going to buy the game anyways, you can buy it through that link on pretty much any platform, so uh, check that out if you're interested. Let's uh, get into a new game here. We're going to go on very hard. Experience with tactical games, it is the intended experience. Enemies will deal more damage. Uh, we will not regenerate health after combat, so our med kits will become much more important. And school skill cooldowns uh, won't reset after combat either. So let's get rocking and rolling here. Now, I'm not sure how much has changed between the beta and the full release, but we're not going to be skipping any cutscenes or anything like that, um, just in case things are different. And I'm sure that some of the layouts another will be different. Day, another so let's just mission, go. risking our necks for the Ark. You know, I ask myself, Ducks, why are you out here? And you know why. The Ark's water pump is broken again, and Hammond said he needs more scrap to fix it. Yeah, well, we'd do it a lot better if he'd sent us somewhere with actual scrap to find. Why do you have to be so annoying? Come on. We gotta head back before prep closes for the night. So one thing I, I liked about the beta is that there's a pretty good mix of humor. It's not overused, but when they try to do it, like sometimes it's cringy, but it's also like really funny. And you imagine these two weirdo mutants out here just hamming it up a little bit, you know? No pun intended because of the pig, but... Trust me, I'm not annoying. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Wanna see annoying? I can show you annoying. No, we're good, thanks. We'll, we'll pass. What's wrong with you? We're in the zone. Keep your eyes open and... Mouth shut. Yeah, you only told me that 9,000 <laughs> times already, Borman. So Borman is the uh, pig slash warthog mutant, and then we've got ducks as, you know, the duck. And uh, between combat, this is kind of what we're doing, where we're scavenging for different materials that we can find that we can use to upgrade uh, weapons and the like. There's also artifacts and things that we'll find, remnants of the old world. Uh, hold Q to see the zone overview. This is just a little map marker to show us where we should be heading if we get lost. But I found, at least in the beta, that we really wanted to explore these areas quite a bit. And uh, you'll find scrap hidden in places that you wouldn't really expect. So it does pay off to take your time and see what's out here and able to, Look uh, at this. to help you. Beautiful. Just beautiful. This scrap's gonna make us heroes back at the Ark. So the game will introduce us to certain mechanics and the way things work. I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna hopefully get too far ahead of myself uh, before the game yes, introduces it to like us. Mutants. Not just any mutants, stalkers. Tight muscles, good meat. I smell them too. Tight muscles, Where good meat. Stalkers, mate. there's Ark. Where there's Ark, there's killing time for Skizix and Trebo. Oh, they're close. Close, close, close! Over there! Come, brother! I'm on their trail! Okay, so, uh, we are gonna try and set up here. This is one of the cool parts about this. Um, we can split these guys up. guys. And we can try and take these guys out, um, individually, or we can just run at them head-on. Now, I think it usually makes sense to set up a little bit of an ambush. Uh, if you'll notice our crossbow, this is silent, and it does four damage on hit. The problem is, is that its range is not that amazing. Uh, so if we enter an ambush here, we don't have to fully commit. Um, combat is turn-based, each stalker gets two action points per turn. Some actions such as shooting, throwing, or sprinting will end your turn once used. Sounds familiar. Okay, so we can hold Q to rotate our camera, that's fine. Let's see, so we're a little farther away than we'd like to be. So we can actually... Let's actually exit combat here. Try and get a little closer. And we're gonna try and take out this guy while he's on his own. 
All right, let's ambush before he recognizes us. Showing us our cover. So low cover is 25% in this game. Full cover is 75%, which is pretty massive. If you can get into full cover, uh, you're going to be pretty safe. But the enemy does try to flank quite a bit. So flanking and cover position will cancel his defensive bonus. Makes sense. Okay, so we're going to activate him here. And let's look for our shot. It's 75% to hit. If we hit, we have enough damage to do it. Uh, it is silent, but his buddy is close by, so we'll see what happens if this lands. Got him. Okay, so he is aware. Bye-bye. He did hear it. Uh, but we're gonna actually... We're gonna actually activate Borman here as well. You can look at our different weapons. We've got the Stinger, we've got the Scatter Gun. Uh, we're gonna just move in here. It'll be a 75% chance to hit. That's one of the things I really like about Mutant Year Zero, is it shows you what you're capable of before you move there, so it kind of removes some of the guesswork that can happen in these games. Alright, so we've got a 75% chance. Yeah, that'll do. Overkill, I like it. That's exactly what Borman would do. So I'm okay with this. Hey, follow me. Never seen you. All right, we'll grab this stuff. Also make sure that we check behind us. Now we may see some similar uh, starting episodes compared to the beta, um, but I imagine that there's some rebalancing that's been done. And so we might see different enemies at different times. Scouting ahead. Uh, let's actually get you out of hiding here. We grow. Okay, a Broiler 50 mod, so plus one additional crit damage, 50% chance to burn enemies. Um, these are things that we can upgrade back at the Ark, which we'll get into a little bit later. And there's these cool things out in the world that we can investigate and they'll kind of share some thoughts uh, on. That's a... We saw one of these things once. Filled with zone dogs, right? Oof. The ancients sure knew how to build big pieces of garbage. That's ancient... They were, uh, that's us. We're the ancients, obviously. Big idiots, according to these guys. I find that just scouting near the the map kind of edges is our best opportunity to try and not miss as many things as we can. But by the same token... Ooh, what's that? Oh, hello. Hello! Okay, so... <laughs> I won't spoil what happens here, but let me just quickly double check this side. Let's see if we're missing any scrap over here. A little bit, yeah. Let's grab it. Let's turn off the flashlight as we approach here. Be quiet, boys. Got ourselves some ghouls. One of them looks like he ate a ghoul. We better get into ninja mode. Listen, turn off your flashlight. If we sneak by the water, they won't see us. Okay, we're gonna have to try and remember that ninja mode. Enemies of the Red Skull are too high level for your team and will kill you. Uh, at some point, we would like to come back and deal with these guys once we level up enough. Avoid Red Skull enemies and explore the zone to find encounters that match your team's level. Okay, so we're in sneak mode. I will rip off their tiny stalker arms and beat their faces till they die! You know... Faces too ugly to beat! <laughs> no one loves a stalker! <laughs> Give me the stalkers! Let them come! Faces too well, ugly yeah. to beat? Ark don't even love stalkers! <laughs> Spread out. I'm gonna see if I can... grab this. Thank you. Yeah, look at that guy's. They're huge. Come on. All right, that's my main goal is to take these dudes down at some point. Okay. Now, once we reach the Ark, we'll be able to jump back and forth from different locations. Once we have scrap, we can go back to the Ark and upgrade, uh, go back out to wherever we want, which is really nice. The Ark's up ahead. Home, sweet home. 
Oh, I'm gonna kiss that elevator when I see it. Get upstairs, <laughs> take a bath, get a grog with the boys. Get another grog with the boys. Foot massage. Oh, it's gonna be great. Like we throw in the foot massage there. Can't be, you know, can't be too masculine. A few grogs and a foot massage. Sounds like a pretty decent time. A campsite. Looks like a family lived here. Lived here and died here. Nothing. Okay, so these med kits are going to become invaluable to us. Uh, you can use a med kit at any time to heal your stalkers uh, in the inventory. Healing outside of combat always refills you to full health. Uh, in combat, I believe it heals you for 4 HP, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so you get a lot more value out of it. Well, potentially, depending on, I guess, how much damage you took. But you can get a lot more value out of it outside of combat. Okay, hello. There's a cabin up ahead. Definitely feel a ghoul vibe coming off of it. So we run in? Guns blazing? Too dangerous. <laughs> if we're sneaky, we can get into a good position. A good position keeps us alive. Turn off your flashlight. All right. So because we've dealt with this encounter in the beta, we'll have an idea of what we should be doing here. Uh, if you're undetected, you can scope out enemy positions and kill isolated weak enemies using your silent weapons. Uh, this can tip the balance of a fight into your favor by reducing overall enemy numbers. All right. Which we kind of explained earlier, but... I think that first fight, you're meant to just try and battle them the way that you normally would. Okay, so we're going to slip I'm over to this left I'm side. Angry. I guess we take the arc. Taste the mutants. <laughs> Love me some mutants. <laughs> there we go. Rip their hearts. Crush their... Hey, hey. Stay back. Uh, I hope not. Hungry. Kill. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, we can get up to high ground. Uh, high ground gives us a defensive bonus as well, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to put Borman in here. Pretty sure this is exactly the approach that we took in the beta as well. But it just seems to kind of make sense. And then this guy, if we can isolate him, might be nice to try and take him out. Now we have that hunter there that's pretty strong. Okay, I'm going in. Let's activate. We have a 100% shot here. Now, uh, your chances to hit, this is dependent a little bit on, well, actually a lot on your weapon range. Uh, crossbow, you need to be fairly close. So at 100 here, this is pretty nice, obviously. Um, but we'll take this guy out. We'll see if it alerts the others. Overkill, I like Another it. Another one bites the ducks. <laughs> Another one bites the ducks, all right. When your stalker team levels up, each mutant gains mutation points. Mutation points can be used to unlock powerful combat mutations or improve your stalker's stats such as health or movement range. Beautiful. Let's take a look at what we got here. Mutations are either major, minor, or passive. Only one of each can be set in your loadout. Stat bonuses are permanent and are always applied regardless of loadout. Your loadout can be changed in the inventory at any time outside of combat. So, what I really like about this system is it's so flexible and you are meant to change your skills up dependent on the situation. Um, it, you're not locked down to a certain tree. However, if you do diversify a lot and you don't go down a certain path, then you might not hit your higher level abilities as soon because you're spending them on all the lower ones. Uh, that being said, we have one point available. This skull splitter, this is really nice. It's a hundred percent critical chance at, uh, at a, a cost of 25 accuracy, which is still pretty good. As you saw, if we get in close enough there, we have a 100% chance to hit. So taking a guaranteed crit at 75 accuracy with that crossbow feels pretty good. You could also go with your stats where you increase your HP by one, which isn't bad on ducks because he's pretty low. Um, but I think for now we're going to take Skull Splitter. It's really strong. 
Uh, we'll get into inventory and stuff later as well, uh, but for now we're just gonna kind of take it as it comes. Now, with Borman, we could go and increase his HP by one. Because he's got so much already, I don't really see the value in that. We're better off saving for run and gun, which means we could sprint and take a shot just like an XCOM. So we're gonna actually save that point. Now, if we can, let's take a quick look here. This is a, this is a guaranteed crit of, or this is a crit of five. The stinger is a crit of seven. So what we may want to do is um, look at using this weapon uh, to try and take out that bigger guy with the new ability that we just got. Uh, the other option that we could use is we can switch weapons up and give him the scatter gun for extra damage, but we kind of want the range. You can see over on the right, we'll have the, the 10 range on these weapons. So I think we'll just utilize the stinger to uh, try and take out this next guy. Let's see what our shot's like from here. We can activate, see where we're at. No line of fire, okay, whoops. Let's exit combat, let's set up a little bit better. Now, we are kind of splitting our guys a little bit heavy here. It, it's a bit risky, but it certainly feels a lot cooler. Here's a Gaper, can destroy covers uh, and knocks back enemies. It's got a lower range, but that's a good uh, solid amount of low-end damage output. Six guaranteed damage is pretty huge. So let's take that. And let's see if we want to switch this for anything right now. Uh, I don't think right at this moment we're going to do it. Actually, if we're going to engage with the Stinger, let's swap out the crossbow for this. I don't think it's really going to matter, but... All right, let's see what our shot's like from this area. So 75, but if we go Skull Splitter, it takes us down quite a bit. Uh, so again, not too thrilled about that. I'm gonna see if I can push it and get just a little closer. I'm gonna go from here. Okay, so we got caught sneaking, which actually might not be too bad. Uh, we can just take this regular shot actually and forego the skull splitter. 75 feels okay. The problem is that we're out in the open here. Uh, so hold on, let me actually, let me back this up a second. Because we're revealed, let's just move in. We'll get into the cover. And then hopefully we have an opportunity with Borman to take this guy. We're definitely going to activate. What's our chance to hit from here? Actually pretty good. All right, handled. Got you. Yeah, baby. All right. Uh, so we leveled up again. I'm probably overthinking these scenarios, like, a lot, uh, but it's been a few weeks since the beta, so uh, forgive me if I'm not going super quick here. Now, we do have two points available on him. We're going to go ahead and grab that running gun. And I think... So this is minor, this is minor. So we'd have to replace the skull splitter with this knee shot. I think the best one to save for is probably moth wings, but I'm going to grab this point in health... Uh, just to kind of get him up to the similar level of where Borman is. All right. Found a hand grenade. Thank you very much. Come back here. Let's get him out of hiding. Split up. Boy, <laughs> you okay there, big guy? 
Artifact collected boombox. Strange talking box that hisses at you like a snake when powered on. Sometimes, depending on where it's placed, it will speak to you with beeps, whistles, or even faint voices. Uh, including, or includes a handy slot on the front for keeping things in. Chronicler's Weeb. Use artifact points to buy upgrades in the Ark. Look at this beauty. The ancients left a lot of ugly junk behind, but once in a while you see something like this. Wonder what these buttons are for. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it if I were you. I'm not kidding around. Lay off the buttons. What's up your butt? That's a bomb, all right. <laughs> they used to call it a boom box. Touch that red button. Sound like he had a bomb in his butt. Boom. Don't be Crazy. pretending you know what any of this crap is. We'll bring it back to the Ark and show it to Prip. Ask him what it's worth on the black market. These are some of the best parts of the game, in my opinion, where uh, you find these old artifacts of the of the dumb ancients, and the way that these guys think that they might be used is always kind of interesting. Uh, okay, inventory-wise, let's take a quick look here. So these are our equipped mutations down at the bottom, uh, as you can see, the two that we've upgraded. Uh, Weapon-wise and grenades-wise, we have to make sure that we're equipping the stuff that we have available. So let's go ahead and throw the hand grenade in there. This will destroy cover. The other option that we have is the Molotov, which will do burn damage, which is really nice, actually. We've also got a smoke grenade, so if we get into trouble, we can drop this on us. It also puts out fire, which is interesting. Didn't know that, so uh, pretty cool. We have slots for helmet and armor, and then, of course, our weapons. Now, it's a tough call because we do want to have a silent weapon, so we're going to make sure that we keep this crossbow active for now, at least. Um... We could argue that we should maybe give him the Gaper. And I, I go back and forth on the best way to load these guys out, but I'm gonna give Borman the big Gaper weapon, and then we'll take the scatter gun over here on Ducks. What's nice about this is because of his ability where we can guarantee uh, a crit, then uh, this actually has the highest crit chance as well. So if we run into a big enemy, then we can use that hopefully to our advantage. Okay, so the metal bird's where we came from. Let's head out. And if there's anything that's unclear, guys, feel free to uh, ask below and I will definitely answer what I can. But I think we've covered everything up to this point pretty well. Of course the world ends. You did it to us. When the ice melted, you said nothing. When the plague spread, you did nothing. When the nukes dropped, you became nothing. At least that's what the Elder says. But cheer up. You'll be happy to know that despite your mistakes, life remains. In a small settlement high above a raging river, people are living and thriving. We call it the Ark. The Ark is humanity's last outpost, a lonely island in an ocean of chaos. Within these walls, we help each other create a new civilization on the ruins of the old one with the guidance of our leader, the Elder. The Elder tells us we're safe as long as we never leave, because outside these walls lies the zone, the never-ending wasteland. A mass grave spanning the planet, littered with your crumbling monuments to your hubris and arrogance. What the Elder chooses not to tell us is our food and water supplies are running dangerously low. That's why he relies on stalkers, adventurers who leave the Ark, explore the zone and scavenge for precious resources. Stalkers are tough enough to resist the rot and they got the smarts and the firepower to keep the zone ghouls at bay. Stalkers have to be more than human. That's me, Mr. More Than Human, a.k.a. a mutant. I look weird to you, but hey, you look weird to me. <laughs> so let's leave it at that. If the stalkers come back from the zone alive, 
the Ark survives another day. If the Stalkers don't come back, the legacy of mankind will be lost forever. At least, that's what the Elder says. Welcome to Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden, everybody. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. I'm in. I love it. I love it. All right. So I think that uh, this is probably a good place for us to take a break. Um, depending on how long the different sections are, we'll kind of go between this 25 and 40 minutes. It really depends on where the missions fall uh, home, for each episode. Home. The elevator's up ahead. But, uh, yeah, if you, as I said, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll be pumping these videos out pretty regularly. It won't be too long before we catch up to the part that we were at in the beta. Uh, but if you're playing as well, let me know if you've run into, like, any cool combinations or any of the specific uh, skills that you have found more valuable than others. I know in the beta, I was just kind of experimenting and trying out different things. Uh, so for this one, we're going to take it a lot more seriously and... Uh, make sure that we're kind of optimizing our squad as best we can. And if you're wondering, we will actually grow our squad. I won't spoil when that happens, uh, but it's likely to happen multiple times. So uh, we'll have additional characters that can fight with us and uh, give us additional opportunities. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy the video, it's the first in the series. If you could drop a like on it, that would help me a lot. Share it with your, with your friends and your family and your grandma and your mom. That'd be cool. Uh, otherwise, as I mentioned before, if you want to check out the game for yourself, I have a link down below. And uh, with that, we'll see you very soon for the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll talk to you then. Bye.